Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Making the Green Economy Work for Your Business workshop. This workshop is one workshop in a series of six workshops addressing the green economy for small and medium-sized enterprises here in Ottawa. My name is Sharon Coward. I'm the executive director of EnviroCenter. EnviroCenter is a nonprofit environmental organization located here in Ottawa. Our core mission supports sustainable lifestyle. That means that we encourage people to take action on climate in their own lives, in their homes, in their workplaces, in their businesses, and right here in our community. We do this by pointing people toward practical steps they can take to reduce their environmental impact in lasting ways. Our work focuses in four main areas, green homes, active transportation, green lifestyle, and green business. For the purposes of this workshop, we're going to be focusing on green business and business sustainability. This links into our Carbon 613 Business Sustainability Program and Network. This program supports local businesses to achieve their sustainability goals through a variety of program initiatives and a network. Before we get into the core content of this workshop, I'm going to ask you online or whatever format you're watching this in to think a little bit about what you really think about the green economy. Often we find that people when they're attending workshops or even watching a video online will take a different position on the green economy than they actually take in their business lives. So I want you to think a little bit about these questions about the green economy. Is it realistic? Is it necessary? Does it actually apply to you? Does your business matter in the scope of green economy? Are you actually going to do any of these things that we talk about? Is anyone doing it? And is this about the carbon tax? These are some questions that we often encounter. You can write down your answers to them or you can just keep them in your head as we go through the workshop. Before we start, I'm going to show you a quick video created by EnviroCenter talking a little bit about the green economy. goals of the workshop today. The first is to get a basic understanding of the green economy. What is the green economy? The second is to learn what other businesses are doing with respect to green economy. And the third is to talk about the context right here in Ottawa. If you're watching this from another city, the things that we talk about will be equally applicable, but because we're in Ottawa, we're using local Ottawa examples. So first of all, why talk about the green economy? In the simplest terms, we're talking about green economy because we know that we need to keep climate warming under 1.5 degrees. There are a variety of ways that we need to work at making that happen, but when we talk about green economy, we're talking about an economy that works to achieve that and also works as an economy. So why stay under 1.5 degrees of warming? 1.5 degrees is generally considered to be the cutoff point to avoid what is known as catastrophic warming. We are going to experience some climate warming. We are already experiencing that. And we're experiencing some of the consequences that we hear about today, including heat waves, melting permafrost, sea level rise, and unpredictable weather, and all the things that go along with that. Catastrophic warming, however, is when we pass the point where we're not exactly sure what's going to happen. And we may suffer some very serious consequences, including things like mass species loss, mass flooding, crop failures, and generally the potential for large-scale human suffering and suffering of other species. 
So we've established that we need to stay under 1.5 degrees of warming. Basically, in the simplest terms, the green economy is an economy for 1.5 degrees. And that means a few very basic things. We need the green economy to be low emissions. It means that we need to be heading towards net zero emissions by 2050, and ideally well before 2050. We need to have made a lot of progress towards these emissions reduction goals by 2030. In fact, a green economy aspires to potentially be net positive. When we talk about net zero, we mean zero carbon emissions, or if we haven't managed to reduce our emissions 100%, then let's say that we have this much emissions, we are understanding that we're doing things that are absorbing carbon at least that much and getting us to a net zero level. Net positive goes a little bit further. We already know that we have a huge amount of carbon emissions in the environment now. Net positive means that we cut our emissions to zero or close to zero, and then we do actions that absorb carbon to get us even better and below zero. The other thing that's really important about a green economy is it has to work. It has to work as an actual economy to support our society. So what does that mean in practical terms? Generally speaking, when you hear people talking about the green economy, they're referring to some of the things that are listed on this screen. They mean clean energy, which is usually renewable energy like hydro, wind, solar, but it's any kind of energy that does not produce carbon emissions. They're often referring to energy efficiency, that means using less energy to do the things that we need to do to run our society. That can be just to reduce the amount of fossil fuels that we're burning. It can also be to reduce our energy so that we are able to replace all of our energy with renewables. Green economy can mean clean tech. This means a whole variety of things, but it can be things as simple as developing automation systems so we use less energy. It can be ways of measuring the carbon that we are emitting. Clean tech refers to any kind of technology solution that supports the green economy. Carbon capture is sometimes part of the green economy. This means exactly what it sounds like, catching carbon as we emit it and doing something else with it so that it doesn't get into the environment. Green economy can include what's known as ecosystem services. This is a technical way of referring to the services that the natural world provides. So for instance, if we are doing an initiative to encourage planting trees or preserving a forest or preserving some kind of natural system that absorbs carbon, we understand the service that that area provides in reducing carbon as an ecosystem service. Green economy also includes all the supporting industries. So for instance, green finance, any kind of financing that supports green economy, green development, renewable energy, that falls into the description of green economy. Sometimes people include things like biodiversity, conservation, and waste reduction in green economy, and they certainly apply as green initiatives. For the purpose of this presentation, everything that we refer to here as green economy will be speaking about net zero or low carbon initiatives. So now we're going to take a minute to look at some green economy facts. What's actually happening out there in the world around the green economy? So one thing to keep in mind about the green economy is it is definitely not niche anymore. There are lots of things happening all around the world in the green economy. That said, you're not going to be able to go out there and find examples of an entire country that's running a green economy that I could use to demonstrate why this works. It's just starting out, and part of getting that movement going is getting people educated of how it works and what the benefits are. But we'll start with a few examples of what is happening out there. Globally, the clean tech sector is forecast to surpass U.S. $2.5 trillion in the coming years. Right here in Canada, the green economy is projected to be worth as much as $26 trillion, creating as many as 559,000 jobs in clean energy alone by 2030. This chart gives you a bit of an idea of where some of the jobs we talk about when we refer to green economy are located. A huge number of those jobs today here in Canada are in the clean energy sector or in energy efficiency. A few more examples of how green economy is taking off in different ways around the world. In 2019, solar was up 17.5% over 2018. Electric vehicle sales in 2019 were up 46% over 2018 and 64% over 2017. 
The finance world is seeing some significant changes toward green economy, demonstrating a growing interest in green economy and green investment. ESG investments, ESG stands for Environment, Sustainability and Governance, have increased massively over the last years. In 2018, $11.6 trillion were invested in ESG investments, up from only $3 trillion in 2010. Divestment. Most of you will have heard some talk about divestment. Divestment refers to when companies move their investments out of fossil fuel industries or highly polluting industries into other sectors. The leaders in this area were cities, universities, sometimes churches, that decided that they needed to divest their investments to demonstrate their support for a low carbon economy. But this has increased massively and we're hearing commitments all over the world from all kinds of different players. Divestment is becoming common. Companies like Goldman Sachs, BlackRock, AXA, which is one of the largest insurance companies in the world, the European Investment Bank, the largest public lender in the world, and the African Development Bank are all committing to divestment. In September 2019, $11 trillion had been divested, up from only $52 billion in 2014. And big companies are starting to get on board the green economy movement. This slide shows a few examples of some companies who have been in the news recently with their environmental commitments. Big companies are starting to make big green moves. IKEA, for instance, announced their intent to be climate positive by 2030. In January, Microsoft committed to being climate negative by 2030. In September, Shopify here in Ottawa committed to create a sustainability fund which will work toward, among other things, powering 100% of their operations by renewable energy. There are many, many examples, and you just have to read the news any day to see examples of companies committing to this type of action. Businesses are doing this because they care, but they're always also doing this because there's a good economic case. In real terms, the cost of inaction on climate is greater than the cost of action. According to the Stern Report, the global cost of climate change is estimated to be around 5% of global GDP each year, as opposed to the cost of action, which is estimated to be around 1% of global GDP. These are, of course, huge estimates, but you get the idea. Ignoring climate change is going to be much more expensive than taking action now. The estimated cost to Canada of climate change is between 21 and 43 billion per year by 2050. In 2018, the actual cost of insured damage from severe weather across Canada was about $2 billion. And that's just one element of the cost of climate change. So you can imagine how high that number could get. So let's talk about what this means for Canada specifically. Canada is well positioned to do very well in the green economy. I have listed on this slide six key elements that a country needs to thrive in the green economy. Of course, there are others, but these are six key factors. The first is abundant clean energy resources. This is on the list because in order to thrive in the green economy, and in fact, in order for the green economy to be achieved at all, we will need to do a lot of switching to electricity and clean resources. That means building up your clean energy resources in all kinds of different areas. In Canada, we have a lot of resources to do that. We have large supplies of hydro, Wind, solar, even tidal. Second is the ability to develop these resources. It's great to have a huge land with lots of resources, but if you don't have the technical capacity or the investment capacity to develop those resources, you won't be able to. Here in Canada, we have both. The third is educated population. That links quite well into the second one, but it's specialized. We have a highly educated population here in Canada. Right here in Ottawa, we have one of the most educated populations in the world. That allows us to supply the technical training that is required to make an energy evolution like this take place. The fourth key factor is a strong construction industry, which we also have in Canada. Any kind of transformation to a significantly different economy based on different systems involves a lot of new building. As we move towards a green economy, we will need to retrofit our buildings, we'll need to build up a different kind of energy infrastructure, and we will need to build transportation infrastructure. All of these things require the kind of construction industry that we have here in Canada. The fifth factor is innovation and clean tech. 
Both of those are strongly represented here in Canada, Ottawa representing one of the clean tech hubs of the region. The last key factor is a strong ethical system of governance. Green economy works in part because the market failure that is climate change needs to be corrected by legislation. That doesn't work if you don't have a strong government and rule of law. While we might debate the strength and ethics of our government at various times, on the global scale, we have a very strong governmental system and a strong rule of law. So we've established that Canada is well positioned to do well in the green economy. But there's more than that. There's a risk of not joining into the green economy. There's a cost of inaction. Any kind of economy that is taken by surprise by change can suffer some consequences. And let's think about Canada's economy. Let's imagine for a second, what does Canada's oil and gas sector look like in a net zero economy? How are our oil and gas sector workers doing? How is the unity of the country doing? We have an economy that is significantly based on our energy infrastructure. And if we want to move towards a low carbon economy, we need to plan. We need to plan to make sure that we don't end up with a huge amount of stranded assets, people investing in things that they can no longer use. We want to plan to make sure that when the world does switch to low carbon and doesn't want to buy our old fossil fuel resources, that we are well positioned to move the workers working in those sectors into profitable fields. This requires some planning. If we do a little planning and have some foresight, we can be ready to participate in the green economy and thrive. If we don't and we ignore the possible future, the low carbon future, we can get left behind. And of course, there are many co-benefits of moving towards a green economy. Basically, we're trying to build a good future. By many measures, the green economy is just a good thing with all kinds of co-benefits. For example, cities with green infrastructure for flood prevention and excellent public transit to cut vehicle emissions also have cleaner air and are nicer places to live. People who have more green space in their cities and spend less time commuting to work are generally healthier and happier. People who get around via active transportation are healthy, happy, and spend less money on health care. They also lose fewer workdays to illness. Resilient homes that are built to passive standard are nicer to live in, they have good air, they're less expensive to maintain, and they last longer. Cities planned for small travel distances can make for happier residents. The list goes on and on. This is one of my favorite cartoons that's been around in the climate world for a long time. It asks, what if it's a big hoax and we create a better world for nothing? This is so true. Climate change is happening, but you don't have to believe in climate change or taking climate action to believe in some of the initiatives that move us towards a green economy. Okay, so let's bring this down a level and talk about right here. We're going to talk about Ottawa. As I mentioned before, if you're in another city in Canada, most of this information is equally applicable to you. Right here in Ottawa, According to a business energy and emissions profile that EnviroCenter did in partnership with ClimateSmart in 2017, around 2 million tons of CO2 could be reduced and managed by City of Ottawa businesses alone. On average, according to the same report, businesses save around $397 per ton of CO2 reduced. This means that not only are they taking action on climate, but they're also saving money. When businesses start to look at their climate emissions and track what they're spending and what they're emitting, this is known as carbon accounting. It's like any other kind of business accounting. It translates your carbon footprint into solid numbers that you can look at, understand your carbon footprint, and make strategic changes. The BEEP report indicated that carbon accounting is well worth a business's effort. Businesses that are doing carbon accounting see around an 11% reduction after three years in carbon emissions while their business grows. Top performers, and that means businesses that are really taking significant efforts to reduce their carbon emissions, can see as much of a, as a 30% reduction by the second year. In Ottawa, this could mean as much as 128,000 tons of CO2 reduced and a cost savings of over $50 million for local businesses. And in case you're thinking to yourself, well, that's all very nice, but my business is really small and it's in a sector that doesn't really create much carbon emissions. 
I'm not manufacturing. I'm not working in any of those areas. I'm providing for you a rating of the different kinds of businesses that are here in Ottawa. And it's a little surprising. This chart shows sectors of the Ottawa business market rated by number of businesses, by emissions, and by emissions per sector. By emissions, the single biggest emitting sector in Ottawa is accommodation and food services. The second is construction. And the third, surprisingly, is office-based businesses. This is because carbon emissions are cumulative. So generally speaking, as you may already understand, office-based businesses, for example, are not huge emitters. And they're not huge emitters in Ottawa. But there are so many office-based businesses in Ottawa that their cumulative emissions make them the third highest emitting sector. This is another way of looking at the same thing. What you should understand looking at these charts is that a huge section of the emissions produced by businesses here in Ottawa are produced from their buildings, heating and cooling their buildings. So when you look at the accommodations and food services sector, that's a big section of what you're seeing there. These are building-based businesses and they use fuels to heat and cool. So let's talk a little bit about why businesses take action on climate. There are a lot of different reasons why businesses in different sectors are inclined to take action on climate. I've listed here a variety of the reasons that some businesses have indicated for taking action. Some businesses feel that their marketing, reputation, brand image will benefit. Sometimes businesses are building on things that they've already done so that they can maximize benefits. Often there's cost cutting and efficiency. Sometimes businesses, particularly the office sector, are taking action because they have a personal motivation and commitment to climate. Some businesses are anticipating future requirements. That means legislation. So, for instance, if a business is anticipating needing to report on carbon or needing to keep their emissions within a certain cap, that will motivate them to take action. Other motivators include industry and community engagement on climate, a corporate social responsibility mandate, demand from their customers, investors, partners, any kind of stakeholder, supply chain engagement, networking opportunities among the community of businesses that care about climate action, and often employee retention. Because especially among younger employees, businesses that are taking action on climate are considered a good place to work. When we do this workshop live, we ask people to rate these reasons in order of priority for the region's single highest emitter, the accommodation and food services sector. So I can't talk to you in person, so I've gone ahead and given you the answers. This demonstrates how the accommodation and food services sector rates the importance of each of these factors. And it may not be entirely surprising to see that they rate the most important factor in going green, cost cutting and efficiency. But you'll see the second one is interest and personal motivation. If you go down the list, you can see that most of these factors have some kind of relevance in this sector deciding to take action. And of course, reasons for taking action vary sector to sector. In construction, maybe a bit surprisingly, the reason is usually marketing. In manufacturing, very unsurprisingly, the biggest reason is cost cutting. As I mentioned before, in offices, the single biggest reason for taking action on climate is interest and personal motivation. What are your reasons for taking action? So we've talked about some of the reasons that people are inclined to take action, that businesses are inclined to take action on climate. So when they do, how do they benefit from taking action and moving toward the green economy? Generally speaking, businesses gain from three major areas, energy efficiency, clean innovation, and competitive advantage. Energy efficiency is probably the biggest area that businesses can gain in the green economy. You've probably heard a lot of talk about energy efficiency. Energy efficiency measures are encouraged in all areas of government. The federal government supports incentives in energy efficiency. Provincial governments do. Even municipal governments tend to have some kind of involvement in energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is forecast to boost the global economy by as much as $18 billion by 2030. Under the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change, businesses are forecast to save as much as $3.2 billion each year through energy efficiency measures. This means that businesses save money and their bottom line improves. It also means they can reinvest into their own business and grow their business in significant ways. 
The other side of energy efficiency is that energy efficiency also applies to consumers. The Pan-Canadian framework forecasts that consumers could save as much as $1.4 billion each year because of energy efficiency measures. This supports businesses because that money can go back into the local economy. Energy efficiency also creates new business opportunities. This means areas that companies can move into to develop products that work in energy efficiency, which they then can sell and build up the economy. Some good examples of that are waste to energy, clean tech, creation and manufacture of e-buses. Energy efficiency can reduce business vulnerabilities. As you know, commodity prices fluctuate a lot and frequently. If a business is dependent on, for instance, imported natural gas or oil to run their operations, they can be much more vulnerable to market changes. If they have moved towards energy efficiency, require less energy, or produce their own energy, they're significantly less vulnerable. Second, clean innovation. How does clean innovation help a small or medium-sized enterprise like yours? Well, one of the ways is clean innovation creates better machines. One very well-known example of that is high-efficiency furnaces. Better machines allow you to run your operations better and spend less money on energy. Clean innovation can also create better processes. It's a bit more of a leap to figure out how better processes assist businesses, but they really can. For instance, somebody comes up with a process to capture the gases released from waste and use them to power garbage trucks. This is actually happening in Toronto. This means that that business is able to save a huge amount of money and climate emissions because of this clean innovation. Improved technology is another way that clean innovation can help businesses. For example, the cost of photovoltaic cells has gone down 70% since 2010. This means that this technology is more accessible to local businesses to supply their energy needs, and they are able to become more efficient. Finally, Clean innovation creates new stuff that can benefit businesses. For example, automation systems that are installed in many businesses these days are now saving businesses huge amounts of energy and money. Recent studies indicate that the use of, building, of a building automation system can reduce utility and operating costs by up to 15%. More specifically, Using an automation system to adjust the thermostat and lights based on time of day, occupancy, or usage patterns can contribute to an overall energy savings of as much as 30%. This contributes to a business's bottom line. The third way businesses can benefit directly from moving towards the green economy is competitive advantage. The first is a pretty obvious one. If you're using energy efficiency or automation, you're able to do more with less. You can reinvest back in your business and your business can thrive. Second, as the price on carbon goes up, as is forecast to do here in Canada, the less carbon-based energy a business is using, the more advantage they will have. This isn't an advantage that is really showing fruit right now, but if our carbon price does continue to increase, there will be more evidence of this happening. Third, reputation. Businesses really value their reputation in the community and really value the community believing and knowing that they are taking action on some of the things that are very important to that community. Sustainability is becoming increasingly important in the business community. This can also apply to staff as much as it does to clients. People like to work for businesses that they feel are doing good in the world and care about their community. And finally, there's the new product. The green economy requires all kinds of new products and technologies in order to move forward and be efficient and effective. If you are the business that creates the new item that's going to save a huge amount of energy or that's going to make a system work better or is going to be able to store the renewable energy that you haven't previously been able to store, you have a chance to have a huge competitive advantage. For example, the Canadian energy startup Ezinc was recently in the news for raising money to store clean energy far longer than current available batteries allow by using cheap and abundant zinc. If that takes off, They'll be the first in that market and they will thrive. People creating these new products stand to have significant success here in Canada because Canadians are interested in this stuff. 88% of Canadians are interested in buying more efficient appliances. 79% are interested in upgrading their homes to save energy. 
and 78% are interested in switching to more efficient heating and cooling systems. This is a market that could potentially explode here in Canada. And that's why your company's next leader on climate might be your CFO. Grey Wolf Lodge is an immersive experience. A facility like this has a lot of moving parts. We worked with Niagara Peninsula Energy to replace our heating and air conditioning units, replace all the incandescent lighting with LED, replaced the thermostat. If the main door to the suite or the balcony door is open, the thermostat automatically shuts off. Not only do we save money, but for the guests, we're able to cater to their specific comfort level for the temperature in a room. Being able to manage the energy consumption, it enhanced the atmosphere, the experience right from the parking lot when a guest arrives through the lodge itself. You know, we save 1.4 million kilowatt hours. That equates to 400 room bookings per year. The success of our energy management program has motivated our staff. Now they can focus on what's truly important to the lodge, creating exceptional customer experiences each and every time. So let's talk about some specifics. What are some green economy growth areas that you should be aware of for your business? The first is renewables. To get anywhere near our targets for carbon emissions reduction, we need to scale clean renewable energy massively. Renewables currently provide about 17% of Canada's total energy supply. That's actually pretty tiny. Everything else comes from carbon producing or non-renewable sources. Generally speaking, it's agreed that to 100% decarbonize, we must electrify pretty much everything. But that means increasing our electricity capacity by two to three times, according to recent studies. This means that renewables are going to need to expand significantly. There's a great business case for renewable energy. In the energy sector, the business case is based on what's known as the EROI, the Energy Return on Investment. You can see some of the ratings here for different types of energy. Energy return on investment basically means how much energy goes into one unit of energy to produce the energy that comes out. So for example, if I wanna produce energy from a wind turbine, I have to take into account the amount of energy that went into creating that wind turbine, getting that wind turbine to that location and getting the system running. Then the amount of energy that is produced is compared to that amount to show how efficient that particular type of energy can be. The business case for wind and solar here in Canada is very good. Wind has an EROI of 30 to 1. Solar has an EROI of 9 to 1. By comparison, the oil sands have an EROI of 5 to 1. The market forecast for renewables is very optimistic. It is forecast to grow 40% between 2017 and 2022. Another big area of expansion that we can expect to see is in retrofits. You might have heard people talking of retrofitting to net zero. In order to move to a low carbon economy, we need to change the amount of energy that we're using to heat and cool our buildings. Here in Ottawa, around 45% of our emissions are attributed to heating our buildings. That's a huge section. In order to move that sector towards energy efficiency, Recent studies by the City of Ottawa indicate that we are going to need to retrofit as many as 90% of, for example, small residential units. That's a huge amount. That's 300,000 homes by 2050. And in fact, most of those retrofits need to take place by 2040 in order to meet our targets. That means retrofitting around 15,000 homes per year. And I'm just talking about homes here, not even businesses. That is a huge growth market. If any of you here in Ottawa have tried to get a contractor to do some retrofitting in your home recently, you will know that it's already quite challenging. Contractors are in great demand. Moving towards net zero means retrofitting a huge number of buildings, and it means building up a strong and educated retrofit sector. This is an area that could potentially see huge growth in the region. Infrastructure. We touched on this very briefly earlier in the presentation. Moving towards a net zero economy or 
a low carbon economy means really changing our infrastructure. Our whole system right now is based on a fossil fuel energy infrastructure. We're going to need to transition to a system that is primarily based on an electrical infrastructure. That means changing huge elements of our infrastructure, both the actual electrical grid in order to expand our capacity and possibly change the way that we're distributing energy. We also need to invest in other types of infrastructure like transportation, water. It's Some people are surprised to hear how much energy is used in our water infrastructure. If we need to move towards an economy that uses less energy and is 100% supplied by renewables, we'll need to look at our water infrastructure and change it. All of this work is expensive and demands workers. The federal government has committed to spending $180 billion over the next 12 years on infrastructure. This is likely to be a huge growth area. Let's look at a couple of examples of that. I talked a little bit about changing our transportation infrastructure. A really simple example of that is the move towards electric vehicles. As we move away from fossil fuel powered vehicles, we're going to need to develop a full electric vehicle charging grid. This has already started in a lot of areas, but we need to go further than we have now. That involves skilled workers. It involves building an entire infrastructure right across the country to support electric vehicles. This is a sector that potentially has a lot of growth opportunity. Manufacturing is another potential growth area. We've talked already about some of the products that are going to be needed to support the green economy, and I've listed some of them here. Some of them are very obvious that you will have already thought of, and some of them are a bit newer. Electric vehicles for sure. A manufacturer of electric vehicles will stand to do very well in the green economy. Heat pumps. Heat pumps use much less electricity to heat indoor spaces. They are becoming more popular and they are considered to be an essential element of retrofitting our homes in particular and also our business buildings as we move towards net zero. Currently, heat pumps are actually a little hard to come by. Manufacturing and selling heat pumps is anticipated to be a growth sector. Building materials. As we move towards the green economy, people are looking at something known as embodied carbon. This is the carbon that is attributed to the building materials, the the physical items that go into a building. And people are looking at how they can reduce the carbon in these items. So as many of you probably already know, concrete is quite a high emitting substance. The production of concrete uses a lot of carbon, uses a lot of energy. One example that people are looking at as a, as a potential growth area to reduce embodied carbon is mass timber. Using a, a type of wood, it's not straight wood, it's, it's a fabricated type of wood that can support building structures up to 12 stories to manufacture buildings, actually capturing carbon into the inside of these buildings rather than emitting carbon to produce buildings. We are already seeing a huge demand for mass timber here in Canada, and we are one of the leading producers of mass timber. This will be a growth sector. We've already talked a bit about automation. You'll hear later in the presentation some examples of businesses that are already growing because of their capacity to build automation systems. And there are all kinds of other ways that people can get into manufacturing materials that actually support the green economy. One interesting example is Halifax's Carbon Cure, which uses recycled carbon dioxide to make stronger, cleaner concrete for new homes. Talking about electric vehicles, right here in Canada, Winnipeg's new flyer builds electric buses. In Edmonton, Enerchem creates clean fuels out of waste. There are already 298,000 people employed in Canada's clean energy sector and in manufacturing. There's a lot of opportunity in this area. Finally, clean tech. Here in Ottawa, we are home to 240 clean tech companies. It is already a big part of our economy. But demand for clean tech is forecast to double by 2030. And investment in clean tech is already showing growth and is also forecast to double over the next decade. A city like Ottawa that already has a strong clean tech sector can anticipate significant growth in this area as demand for clean tech and energy efficiency devices expands. Education and technical expertise. This might seem obvious, but in order to do any of these things that we're talking about with the green economy, you need some highly qualified, technically trained people. We have a lot of education institutions here in Ottawa, and we produce a lot of highly skilled technicians and tradespeople. 
we can anticipate this growing over the coming years. I've mentioned already a little bit about skilled trades. As our demand for retrofits and home renovation increases, we'll need to expand our skilled trades programs, and that will be a growth opportunity. We have a lot of technical education programs already here in Ottawa, but demand for that is anticipated to increase, which means those programs will see program expansion. Specialized knowledge programs like certified energy manager training, registered energy advisor training, lead certification, these will become skills that are absolutely essential in the green economy. And providers who provide training in those areas, EnviroCenter, for example, trains in registered energy advisors, will actually have much more demand in the coming years and will need to be prepared for that demand. Another thing that's important to think about when you're thinking about your business and the green economy is what will be Canada's niche in the green economy? We don't know the answer to that yet, but there are a lot of areas that have good potential. We could develop exportable expertise. That means having a significant amount of expertise in one particular area that is better than anywhere else in the world. For instance, we are pretty good in manufacturing electric buses. That could be our exportable expertise. We could move into green retrofits or passive house building. That could be our exportable expertise. You'll read a lot of articles in the news recently about the potential for Canada to go into developing batteries for electric vehicles. It's hard to say whether that's going to be a real growth industry for Canada, but that is one option. Building e-vehicles like electric buses. Clean extraction is something that you hear a lot of talk of here in Canada. No matter what happens with the economy going forward, we're going to need materials. Even if we 100% decarbonize, we are always going to need materials to build the things that support our economy. In Canada, we have made significant gains in clean extraction. That means reducing the amount of energy and emissions that go into extracting essential materials. Canada might be able to be a leader in that field. We've talked already about energy retrofits. What else? We need businesses to get on board and think about where Canada's niche could be, where Ottawa's niche could be. If there's something that you could be exceptionally good at, that might be the next niche. Okay, so let's come down another level and talk about opportunity in the green economy right here in town, right here in Ottawa. First, we're going to summarize some of the local economic benefits. We've talked a bit about this in earlier slides, but we'll focus in. Jobs. The green economy shows great signs of being able to create good, stable jobs. For instance, we've talked about the need to retrofit lots of homes, lots of buildings. At a recent talk in Ottawa, an expert estimated that we would need around 5,000 new retrofit trades workers to support that retrofit economy. And that's just one field. Another economic benefit is keeping money in the region. This is something that we don't always hear talked about, but it is a huge factor in energy transition. In Ottawa, we spend around $3 billion a year on energy that is purchased from outside the region. If we move towards a green economy and are able to keep those energy purchases either within the region through renewables created here or just reduce them through energy efficiency, that's a huge amount of money that potentially goes back into the local economy. Other benefits include reduced health spending. Worldwide, the transition to a clean economy would save around $39 trillion Canadian healthcare costs every year. You probably remember when Ontario moved to close all of the coal plants. That was a great environmental measure and has done great things for our carbon emissions. But that isn't fundamentally why we did it. We did it because reducing the pollution from coal plants significantly improves health and reduces our health care costs. This is a well-known and very important co-benefit. There are many other local benefits from the green economy, and I'm not going to have time to go through every single one of them. But basically, the green economy will also produce more livable communities and generally at a less expensive rate. There's a lot of investment that goes into transitioning to the green economy, but once those investments are in place, we can anticipate increasing economic benefits over the years. Now we're going to highlight some success stories in the region that will give you an idea of what's already happening, areas that you could move into, and successes that people have had. So let's talk a little bit about renewables here in town. Renewables have become increasingly common in Ottawa. The Ottawa Renewable Energy Co-op, for example, has installed 14 solar projects across the region at a value of $7 million. The Ottawa Carleton District School Board has installed clean energy at 50 different locations. 
Portage Power, which is Hydro Ottawa's renewable arm, has grown five-fold since 2012. And there are some interesting local examples of how the energy business is growing. For example, in 2019, the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario's dream home was a net zero home. This is interesting because it means that building that home and bringing that into the dream home program used local companies, including solar companies. More and more, we are seeing businesses partner with renewable energy companies and energy efficiency companies to work on their projects. Let's look at the city of Ottawa. They have some good examples of how making changes to move towards the green economy can really save money. The new HVAC system installed at the city of Ottawa water purification plants has created annual savings of $50,000. The new technologies installed at local splash pads have created water savings that amount to $147,000 per year. These savings can be poured back into the city of Ottawa itself. So what about local Ottawa businesses? There are plenty of examples here of private businesses like yours taking on the green economy and benefiting from it. Oakwood Designers and Builders, a local Ottawa company, was the first and only Canadian contractor to design and build its own award-winning design centre and corporate headquarters to lead platinum standards. This headquarters showcases the most innovative materials and technologies that are available today. Oakwood was honoured with the coveted Consumer Choice Award for Ottawa's Best Home Designer and Best Renovator 12 consecutive years. What I'm trying to point out here is that Oakwood's moves towards the green economy and their efforts to position themselves as leaders in the green economy have significantly benefited their design and building business. In 2015, with the help of financial incentives, this Oakville Coffee Company updated their lighting systems in the plant with new energy-efficient commercial LED lighting. They installed occupancy sensors, which further cut costs 25%. They installed smart thermostats to reduce their heating and cooling consumption and added a reflective tint to their windows to reduce the heating in summer. They also installed an energy-efficient roasting machine, which used 80% less energy. All of these measures allowed the company to cut costs and further their goals as a business. This is a great example. Aston Johnson is a company right here in Ottawa, located in Canada. They were able, through the use of incentives, to cut their lighting costs 94% with a return on investment of one day. That is remarkable. That is, that's indicating a combination of the ability for them to cut the energy that they're using through LED lights and also the ability to leverage available incentive programs to ensure that their costs are reduced. Ottawa-based Thermal Energy posted a record first half revenues up 51%. This is a local Ottawa company that sells energy efficient systems to Fortune 500 customers. I mention it here because this is an example of how local companies are growing as the green economy grows. There are many more examples of businesses, large and small, moving into the green economy and seeing significant benefits to their operations and to their bottom line. It's time to get on the green business train. So let's bring this story back to you. If you want to get involved in the green economy, what can you do to start to get on board? There are a whole variety of ways to get educated and to start taking action and move into the green economy. We're going to talk about a few of them and you can always reach out to EnviroCenter to find more information if you want to go further. If your business is interested in energy efficiency in buildings, there is a huge resource base on the Natural Resources Canada website. This is quite a wormhole, so you can go deeply into this site, and it may be more information than you actually want to know. But as you can see, there is information on this site specifically around energy efficiency for businesses and buildings. Another great way to start engaging with the green economy is to leverage incentives. Incentives exist to help businesses like yours make changes, especially around energy efficiency, with some support from governments or utility companies. Enbridge has energy incentive programs, Hydro Ottawa. The federal government also offers some incentives the businesses can apply to to complete retrofits. Another great way to get ideas about how to move your business towards sustainability is to look at what other businesses are doing. 
Many large and small companies have sustainability sites on their websites. You can go there and check out what initiatives they've already done, what they're planning to do, and in fact, how they're marketing those initiatives to benefit their businesses. Today, there are a lot of good news resources out there. This is a CBC site that summarizes environmental news and pulls together key environmental stories. It's a good place to go to try to find out some information about what's happening in Canada around the green economy. Clean Energy Canada has put together a review called the Clean Energy Review, which is actually a tremendous resource for businesses around clean energy. It does focus, as you would expect, on clean energy news, but it is very economy focused and talks a lot about some of the new factors and trends that are influencing the Canadian economy today. The Energy Mix is a local site that pulls together environmental news and specifically energy and climate news to help keep you informed about trends. These things are all important because you'll get an idea of what other businesses are doing, what's happening in different countries, what kind of legislation to expect. If you want to learn more about the green economy, you could attend one of our other workshops. Other workshops offered in this series include 10 Steps to a Low-Carbon Workplace, Building Retrofits for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, and Retrofitting to Net Zero for Builders. These workshops are all 100% free of charge for local businesses. And of course, if you want to go deeper, if you want to take action on climate, but you don't really have the time to read the entire Natural Resources Canada website, or you may not want to dig into the news at great depth, you have the opportunity to join Carbon 613, our business sustainability program. The whole purpose of this program is to make taking action on climate simple for businesses, to help you to understand the steps to take and to walk you through the process so you can reach your sustainability goals without having to reinvent the wheel. We want to encourage people to get creative around sustainability because many of the good business ideas that we're talking about here and sharing with you, they were created by individual business owners. You know better than anybody else what's going to help move your business into the green economy. You can identify where there are areas of opportunity. So start thinking around it and getting creative. And then, of course, building the green economy is going to involve everybody getting on board and taking action. So we encourage you as a local business to start talking it up. Building the green economy is a culture change. Small and medium-sized enterprises make up 98% of all businesses in Canada. And 9 out of 10 employees in the private sector work for small and medium-sized enterprises. 54.2% of national GDP comes from small and medium-sized enterprises. This is a huge section of our economy and our culture. What you do, the decisions that you make, are going to significantly impact the progress of the green economy. We're going to take a minute to look at another video produced by Green Economy Canada, talking about some of the impact that small businesses such as your own can have in the green economy. A 2014 CDP study found that S&P 500 companies with sustainability strategies outperform on the index. At Green Economy Canada, we've seen firsthand that sustainability and profitability go hand in hand. If you are a business looking to gain a competitive advantage, there's a network of Green Economy Hubs across Ontario that can help. Green Economy Hubs work with businesses of all sizes and sectors to set and achieve their sustainability goals. We join because there's a lot of things that we do very well, but there's, a, there's always a room for improvement which is why I thought it was a great program and it's something that's local. So to be able to have someone that give us the guidance that we need. Um, the coaching and mentoring that has come from this membership has been invaluable and has paid itself back trifold, I would imagine. It's, it's just a really good opportunity to meet with people that have the same goals. This working relationship has uh, become more of a benefit than just performance metric based. Um, they offer a lot of um, networking events with different organizations within our region so that we can understand how other facilities are facing their challenges and that, you know, it's been helpful for us to be more efficient and be more effective. For us, it's always about understanding where we're at, but also improving. And Sustainable Hamilton Burlington has been great because they've helped us to understand where we can improve and how we can improve. Because it's really about not only meeting our needs today, but that of the future. 
ContentWise gives me the ability to say, okay, these are things that we can talk about. There are numbers that are shared across multiple companies. So instead of everybody getting together and just saying, here's my profit margin, we can get together and say, oh, this is my electricity usage per capita. And I think any CEO who's interested in their children having money should also be interested in their children having a, a world to live in, um, having clean air, having clean water. So we've got to take that extra effort to make sure that sustainability is important to their business. Businesses and green economy hubs have collectively reduced more than 60,000 tons of greenhouse gases, the equivalent of taking more than 12,000 cars off the road for one year. With local communities and more than 250 businesses, we're shifting expectations and leading a movement. Together, we're demonstrating that a more sustainable economy is possible. Thank you so much for participating in this workshop today. I hope you have learned a lot about the green economy and how your business can benefit from the green economy. This workshop series was undertaken with the financial support of Environment and Climate Change Canada. If you would like to learn more about the green economy or about moving towards low carbon in your business, please get in touch with us by visiting envirocenter.ca.